want to know that the system has a non-trivial solution. Um, and so the general idea is going to be the root Hurwitz stability criterion, um, which means that you can basically take a, a polynomial and show that it has no roots in the right half of the complex plane. Well, that's not all we need, because we need to know that all the roots are less than one. They're inside the unit circle. So before we apply this uh, transformation, which maps everything outside the unit circle to the complex plane, and what that means is that we can tell that after applying that, there are no roots in the right half, and thus there are no roots outside of that unit circle, and we're stable. Um, and so the idea is that this form, we, we get a root table using this, and if every element in the first column of it is non-negative, then we're stable. And so we construct the table. Um, and yes, <laughs> not much time left. Um, and so we get this. And the nice thing is that when you say all of these have to be greater than 0, which are all right there, um, you end up with only one added condition, and that, that's that, and that is that your midpoint is greater than or equal to zero, so you don't have negative relaxation times, which agrees with the invertibility condition. So, you know, that's all great. Um, and we have nu less than one and epsilon sub s less, greater than epsilon sub infinity. And those are all things that most, um, or that all of the methods that we looked at also share those stability conditions. And so just to uh, check, we wanted to plug all of this in maple and graph it, and this was an idea that we pulled from uh, Luker, and it's a lovely paper, and I'm out of time, aren't I? <laughs> um, yeah, and so the idea was we just graph them, and sure enough, all the roots were less than one um, for different dimensions of time, for different values of nu, and then we just said, well, let's make sure it blows up when we violate these conditions, and sure enough, as soon as we do, boom. Uh, our method just absolutely breaks down, which is exactly what we expected. Um, and then more graphs, and then some actual simulation data from MATLAB. Um, and you can see we have exponential convergence. So if we have zero polynomials, then one, two, uh, four, six, eight. We just exponentially converge down, which is very nice. Uh, next talk. Next talk starts at ten thirty. We have uh, about four minutes. You're welcome to ask questions to Eric. And the next speaker can come up and uh, get the uh, talk right now. <coughs> um, you said that when you were making the A tilde matrix, you had to add some term kappa. What was that about? Um, so it's that comes about. So when we're solving, um, so we have our equations, and the idea is that we have to solve them just algebraically for some term, and it turns out that when you do that, you end up having to add this. Uh, epsilon delta squiggle, which there's way too many variables to actually remember, um, but it is just this product of the static permittivity, the relative permittivity, and the permittivity of free space um, times your delta t, um, and it's just something that sort of falls out of the algebra. Um, if I have that slide. Um, Yeah, so down, the delta T falls out down here, um, and it just gets added to F. Mm -hmm. Thank you.